analysis of chapter 27 the bonus chapter answers some of the smallest creatures on earth yet not only is this chapter named after them but it evidently shows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has concern for even ants and do bless them with knowledge that sometimes humankind do not possess as usual we will briefly analyze few verses due to the time limitation we will talk about the imperfection of prophets and the power distribution among them why the Quran does not mention some sins of the prophets let's talk about miracles of the Quran the sign of judgment day according to the Quran prejudice between man and woman homosexuality and why we should not live in fear and a challenge or research to affirm the Quran is super unique since there are many known prophets we must limit ourselves to few I have repeatedly claimed no prophet was perfect and wear themselves on the test they are more like class prefects but still students or slaves in the presence of Allah God sent messages to ants through an ant as verse 18 of this chapter confirm human to human beings in the language and level of the people at the time for example Moses was given miracles similar to magic since magic was popular in his age Muhammad was given the super eloquent Quran because Arabs were bragging to be the most eloquent people. Since God is not the God of only humans, his power distribution extends to animals and things we do not know. Solomon with all his blessings, Allah taught an ant something before Solomon and he humbly asked Allah's guidance, affirming the possibility to err. Allah taught a bird something before Solomon and he used even the jinns through the blessings of Allah. Somehow Allah used some kind of ants again when he was ready to take away Solomon. So Allah has in some way blessed ants over humans, jinns, devils and even Solomon. Do we have to worship ants? No. But they may deserve some respect as God's creatures. The Quran has many miracles like the number 19 and its relation in the Quran. The high odds of being able to write a book like the Quran was also affirmed through supercomputers and the list goes on. But I want to talk about the less talked about ones. Without disrespect to Arabs, the Quran is somehow very different from the Arabic language. The Quran is relatively easy. Arabic is not. The Quran is beautiful and suiting to the human ear of even strangers. Arabic is okay. The Quran and Arabic is like creating diamond from trust or more respectfully creating a super beautiful person from spam. The Quran is super respectful even Satan is addressed with some form of respect. Although some of the sins of the prophets have been mildly discussed while discussing ideas and events, the major personal sins of some prophets cannot be found in the Quran. And it was no secret to Arabians then and now and certainly Allah knows everything. Whereas the precise reason is beyond me, I can tell you no smart person discuss persons or the negative deeds of a dead person as primary time. Also some of what we consider sins may not be sin or may be allowed for a whole different purpose. So we must be very careful in how we condemn anyone, especially the prophets and their so called sins. Verse 82 of this chapter talks about raising a creature to talk to humankind before judgment day. What kind of creature is Allah raising? Allah knows best. I know very little and care very little in some ways. If Allah appeared before me and asked me if I want to know when is judgment day, my response would have been, I want you to please give me the highest rewards or how to achieve them. I do not see much good in knowing when is judgment day, but since people are often wrongly debating the issue and the chapter mentions it, I feel obligated to share my opinion. The Arabic term used in this verse can mean many things. Dabatan min al-lardi from the root word dal baba can mean any moving creature or images. So if it was to happen today, it is likely to be a human being using television, movies, internet, the music, etc. to teach the people. Such medium is the language of humankind today and God has always sent human beings to humans, ants to ants and using the language and miracles of the time. But who said that creature will come to guide or mislead? Who said God may not send an ant to come talk to us? If a Muslim, Christian, Rastafarian, atheist or an ant was proclaiming December 2012 will be judgment day, I will not agree or disagree. 
and less likely to change my routine regardless of reflexive leaning. Verse 34 is a perfect example that prejudice between man and woman is nothing new. Main bashing is very rampant in today's world, especially in the Western world. It is rather sad that we cannot accept the simple fact that people cannot be good or bad based on gender, but rather based on our choices. May God send a smart man to free us from the illusory prejudice against men that seems to hurt women more than the average feminist can fathom. Homosexuality is also mentioned in this chapter, but since I plan to specifically address it in the near future, I won't detail why we need to avoid it. Verse 55 and onwards showed us it was at some point so acceptable that people who opposed them were persecuted and looked down upon. Seems like we are in a similar age again. Advising them can cost you a job or much more. This chapter reaffirms us only the wrongdoing people will get punished on Judgment Day, so we should never live in fear. If your neighbor or co-worker is a homosexual, you can advise them, but you should never be mean to them or fear them unnecessarily. Verse 57 of this chapter shows Allah allowing a prophet to marry a bad woman and did not command him to divorce her. He allowed evil people like Pharaoh to marry a good woman, raise a highly respectable prophet from an idol-worshipping father punish children and parents of prophets, etc. All to help us live in harmony rather than in fear. To affirm life is a distinctive test from collective tests. May Allah guide us, protect us, and bless us. Between the Quran and Arabic, the research is better on kids with little exposure. Get about 100 kids from different cultures. Take three small chapters in the Quran, translated with transliteration, Take similar amount of text from the Bible or any religious book, translate it with transliteration. Ask them to memorize the text in different languages and the Quran in Arabic. They will memorize the Quran a lot faster. Second challenge. Get about 100 people, preferably kids, who have little exposure to Arabic. Let a man recite the Quran and 10 other Arabic texts randomly outside the Quran. More people will read the Quran as more suiting to the human ear more than the text randomly from the Arabic language. There is a reason why over a million people memorize the whole Quran and you cannot find 100,000 people who memorize any book that is about half the size of the Quran. You can have your illusions that people are indoctrinated to memorize it, but the reality remains the way it is written is very different from any book on art. And that is why people can easily memorize it. If you take the brightest Christians, you cannot find one million who memorize the whole New Testament that is not even quarter of the Quran. Presidents, poets, and any writer will admit it is hard to memorize your own writings if it is more than 100 pages. That is why you will see smart authors of very small books on TV going through pages to read their own writings. Writings that may have been rewritten 10 times read over 100 times before it becomes a bestseller. Contrast it with an over 40 year old mind, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, reciting, hence the name Quran, reciting smartly, beautifully, and with buried miracles that supercomputers confirm. Imagine an over 40 year old mind orally giving speeches. Memorizing it at the same time, other people memorizing it within the same sitting and others within this. I do not think it was determination at all, but Allah's super help. May Allah help me and the trying ones to know the Quran in depth and memorize it. Knowing the Quran and living it may perhaps be more important, but memorizing it is a nice plus. It is great that many Muslim teenagers memorize the Quran. Those of us who are yet to memorize it, let us not lose hope in Allah's favor. No exclude efforts and determination. Muhammad started learning the Quran at age 40. I am under 40 and I know many of you are under 40. So we know the Quran more than Muhammad when he was our age. Now, should we say we are too old to learn the Quran while forcing our children, or should we humbly and sincerely try to master the Quran before the age 40? You can pledge something reasonable, like one hour a day to memorize the Quran. Do it with efforts and prayers. I will say a miracle I partly kind of witness. 
There was a very pious African man who was very well respected in my country. 